Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jane Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in New Zealand. And today I thought I'd share with you this card that I made for the latest hop at Around the World on Wednesday. And if you haven't hopped with us before, we're a group of demonstrators from every time zone that Stamping Up operates in. And on the first Wednesday, of every, oh sorry, the second Wednesday of every month, we have an inspiration hop for you. And this month, the, cha um, the inspiration is a sketch challenge, which is great because that's my favourite kind of challenge. And so it was also a great opportunity to play with some new stuff out of the January to April mini catalogue. So the Perennial Lavender Bundle, or Sweet, which is these two sets here, Painted Lavender, Perennial Postage, they're dyes, a beautiful set of paper called um, Perennial Lavender, some lovely um, embellishments, which some of which we'll play with, um, is in the catalogue. Of course, you don't have to buy it all. You can just buy selected highlights if you want to. And it's my first play with it. I mean, I didn't intend to buy it all. Somehow all the bits ended up falling into my cart, though, during pre-order. And so I'm having my first play with it, and I'm going to share it with you um, for this sketch challenge. So we'll start off with what we need to put it together. Well, obviously, um, I have used both the painted lavender, um, the painted lavender bundle and the perennial postage bundle. So that's kind of like the technical stuff that you need. Uh, my card base is uh, made of gorgeous grape because, you know, it just suits the lavender beautifully. Because I'm going for a small square card, it is um, a standard A4 piece of paper, 21 centimetres, scored at 10 and a half. And to get the um, squareness, I've cut it at 10 and a half centimetres too, which, I don't know, it's about four and a quarter inches, I think. So if you were if you were an imperial, you would just do the width of the paper and then cut it however high half the width of the paper is, which I think from memory is about four and a quarter. Okay, so there's your base. Now for the inside, I have got a piece of basic white which is half a centimetre or quarter of an inch smaller, so it's 10 centimetres by 10, and I'm putting that aside because that's for the inside. Um, um, what else have we got? Well, we've got some beautiful designer series paper. Now I started out with, I picked this one because it had all the lovely colours in it. So I've started out with a 10 centimetre square or a 4 inch square, and then I've just cut it diagonally and I'm going to attach it to the card. I'm going to flip it over so that the reverse shows, and I'm going to attach um, the two halves there to give me that background. In addition to that, I have got a um, square of basic white, which is seven centimeters square, and I have already embossed that using the exposed brick 3D folder, but obviously you could use whatever folder you're fondest of. That's going to give us that lovely centre panel. Now I've done quite a lot of, you also need what you need to make this tag with. And I've also done a little bit of that because really it's not very interesting. It's just you know something you've got to do to get the card made. So I started off with a scrap of fresh freesia. And I, I just stamped the big hugs onto the fresh freesia. Then I got these lovely uh, perennial postage dies. And I used that one there. Oops, not that one, that one. And I cut it out of Fresh Freesia, and I cut one exactly the same size out of Shaded Spruce, and I attached them together in the, in the way that I would like them to be when they're done. Now, the way that I got that lovely little eyelet and hole was this little die here that's in the packet. And I, I kept the off cut for you so you could see that when you die cut it, this little end makes a hole and this end cuts you the eyelet. So I cut out the eyelet, worked out where I wanted the hole to be, took the eyelet away and then I just put that through the embossing folder and it came out with the hole and then I glued the eyelet around the hole. Now, the reason I've got such a deep impression there, of course, is because I'd, I had already glued these two together because I wanted the hole in the same place. Uh, and I don't mind about that because, A, the eyelet fills up most of it. But secondly, I'm going to tie um, twine on it, so you're never going to see it anyway. The other thing that I did differently on this one, you'll see I have cut it shorter. So I shortened the length of the die. And on reflection, I thought it looked a bit empty down here. So I'm going to try out this one at full length. And at the end, we can decide which one we like the best. So that's the tag. So um, you need to have, obviously, a piece of fresh, little scrap of fresh freesia, a little scrap of shaded spruce, and a tiny little scrap of gorgeous grape to make the tag. 
Now the other thing you need is just some plain white paper because what I did to make these lovely flowers is out of the painted lavender bundle I took this die which cuts one of those and one of those and I cut two of them. I'm only going to use three of the flowers though and I coloured them using stamping blends. So I'm going to show you how I did that um, or I'm going to show you one and then I'll either miss out the rest or fast forward the rest because you don't need to watch me do all the colouring but I just thought that we should do uh, some of the colouring. So we'll start with doing that. So I'm just using that to protect my surface. So oh, well, let's start with, oh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, that one. The, the way you go about it is the same. And what I used was I used shaded spruce, and I just used light shaded spruce. And the first thing I did was I just went in and I marked out where I thought the, yep, where I thought the stem would be, and I just coloured the little bits that are the stem. Because then I knew where I was. And then I've got two pairs of blends. I've got the Fresh Freesias. And I do have to sort them out because they do look very similar. Okay, so I'm going to start, I always start with the lightest colour. So I'm just going to go over everything and all over in Fresh Freesia. Because the whole point of blends is really that the paper is gets saturated with the alcohol ink and the inks, the layer, different layers of ink will then move. So, giving you that lovely blended look. So, I'm going to start by just overall light, fresh, fresher. And this is one of those sort of techniques where you're never quite sure what you're going to get. You just kind of hope for the best. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit more than that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with some dark, fresh, fresher. And I'm just going to, you know, touch in some points with the dark, fresh, fresher. Basically, I'm going to keep going with a darker and darker colour. And I don't want to cover all over it. I just want, because I don't want it to look all uniform. Flowers don't look like that. So the next darkest colour is Light Highland Heather. So I'm going to go in and add some bits of that around the place. And you can see each, each layer is just getting a little bit darker and a little bit darker. And... And then finally I'm going to come in with some of the very darkest dark heather, dark highland heather, and I'm going to actually go with the paintery end, because you can get a sort of a softer application of colour with it. You can see that's giving me that nice, darky, almost gorgeous, grapey colour. And then what I'm going to do, because I want the ink to all mix, is I'm going to go back in with the light fresh freesia and just kind of give it a light once over just to help all those colours do a bit more blending. And you can see there immediately all of those purplies just kind of blended together a bit better. And you can always go in too and go, oh, you know what, I want a little bit, little darker bit here. And you can always just go in and add, add some stuff. So there's my not very technical but relatively effective way of colouring in the um, the flowers which we're going to attach. Okay, so here are our finished um, flowers and they're all ready to use and I have now attached the two halves together onto the card base. So it's simply a matter of assembly. So I'm going to take my embossed white square. And I, I actually quite love the mathematics, the beautiful symmetrical mathematics of this, of this design. So we're going to take the um, square, make sure it's up the right way or going the right way. And See what I mean about the beautiful symmetry? When the corners match the diagonal, then you know that it's beautifully, it should be beautifully centered. Uh, it just makes it kind of placement kind of easy. She said, looking at it closely. Yes. That is so. 
Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to work out where we're going. Oh, first of all, actually, what I probably should do is add the tie to that. So what I used to make the tie was the linen thread, because linen thread is one of my favourite products. And the day it retires is the day I'm going to probably stockpile about 10, 10 um, reels of it, because I just love it. It's beautiful. So I do also like a generous swish of bow, so I have been a bit profligate in my... Um, attach in my cutting so I'm just going to thread that through oops got fumbly fingers okay and then we're just going to tie that in a bow and fiddle faddle around with it until we get it the size and spread that we want okay now, we could fiddle faddle around with that, but I think it's fine. So I'm just going to lay it there so I know where it's finally going to go. So I know how much room I've got here to attach my beautiful little flowers. Now, what I'm going to do is because I don't... I could attach them using a sponge, I suppose. Um, a sponge in my silicon mat, which is often how I do intricate die cuts. But I do want a little bit of wiggle room, and you do lose the wiggle room when you do it that way. So we'll try it this way, and we'll have a little silent um, crossing of the fingers while I do it. Okay, so I'll just press that down. I'm just going to snip that one. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same with each of these little ones. Just a little dibble of glue. And of course it's very tricky down the, down the stem. If I, if I thought I'd really um, got too much going there, I'd do one of two things. I'd get out my sponge or I'd just do that and just tap off some of it. Okay, so I'm going to go there with that one. Just press it down, just going to trim that one, press it down, oops, I might have to trim them, whoops, just a shade more, and I better pop that back so that I know how much room I've got for number three. Dibble, 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 dibble. This one in. Press, press. Trim. Okay, so we're almost cooking with gas. Okay, now you could either, what I've done on this one is I have just laid it flat. Uh, just for a bit of variety, because I, you know, I do like to try out different things just to see what works best. I am going to dimensional this one just to see if it looks a bit better or a bit different. So just going to pop on my dimensionals, flick off the bats, and pop that in place. I want it lined up with the top of the DSP. Okay, we'll just press that down. Yes, I think that is nicer. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add on some of these beautiful fine shimmer gems, which are part of the perennial lavender sweet that we're using. And ice, there is, that's what I'm looking for. I'll take your pick tool. You can see there's three different, that's sort of more of a Blackberry Bliss, a sort of a gorgeous -y grape and a kind of, I don't know, a Highlandy Heather colour. So let's pop some of those on. I think we'll go for a lovely, big, bold, purpley one. And perhaps uh, hmm, a nice little one of those. And perhaps just for a bit of variety, we might take one of the lighter ones. Pop it, where will we pop it? There, I think. 
Okay, so the only other thing I need to show you is what did I do on the inside? And I can't remember. I... Oh, I stuck it together with blue tech to take a photo of it, so let's just eliminate that. Okay, all I did was I just took a strip of paper, obviously, and just added that in, because I think that's just nice, and it, and it brings the front through into the inside. So I'll repeat that with this one. So there you have it. There is my lovely little sketch challenge for Around the World on Wednesday. If you've seen anything that I've used today and you'd like to add it to your craft stash, don't forget you can shop with me um, in this link to my online store in the um, in the notes below this video. I do think I like the variations that I've made. I like the tag a bit longer and I like it popped up on dimensionals. I think it just adds a little bit more whiz to it. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions and you can contact me through the details in the video description below or in the end card which is about to pop up. Um, don't, um, if you haven't subscribed and you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything new that I do. Uh, don't forget you can shop with me if you live in New Zealand. And above all else, everyone, happy stamping.